Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for April 28, 2022. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense. In this episode, we're going to be talking about a personal experience that I've had with uh, honey traps. If you recall from the last episode, we talked about honey traps and how they are a danger and how people can get sucked into them, uh, especially in the dating world. Well, it turned out that someone tried to leverage this attack against me. So after this episode, I thought maybe it would be a good idea to create a blog post about dating apps and how scammers use those to get people to send them money and do romance scams and things like that. And it turned out that I actually found someone who tried to do a scam on me. So going through this dating app, I found this particular person who had a profile that was very, very basic, didn't have much personal details up about her. And it just seemed kind of odd that this person would reach out to me. And going into this, I already knew that this would probably be going to be a scam. So I had my guards up. And so I was like, okay, let's see if this really is a scammer coming through here. And it turned out it was. So the first red flag that came up was when we were talking in the dating app, within 10 minutes, she tried to get me out of the dating app and into either Telegram or WhatsApp. Well, I wasn't going to do WhatsApp. And so what I did was I created a Google Voice account and created a new Telegram account with that Google Voice so that she would not get my personal information and then use that to add her in and start talking to her there. And talking through her, most of the questions were very unusual. They weren't really somewhat something that you ask potential love interests. They were more towards like how much I made, what I did for a living, kind of things like that, try to gauge how much money she could probably suck out of me and probably changed her tactics based upon what I told her because I didn't give her my real information. I basically told her that I didn't really have a lot of money, so on and so forth, and things were kind of hard for me. And so eventually, when we're in that Telegram account, going back and forth, and she's gathering information from me, and I'm just trying to get some information from her too, but every time I tried asking her kind of like a personalized question that you would ask for a kind of like love interest, she kind of ignored that question and went on to a different question, try to redirect the conversation. So that was another red flag right there that I was kind of like, hmm, this is kind of interesting. So then after the first day of talking on Telegram, she messaged me saying, hey, I don't use this account very much. Can we switch to a different account? And it's like, that's kind of odd. Why would you do this? So I agreed and we switched accounts and it was kind of odd to think about this, but I just agreed with it and went on trying to further to see where the scam was going to go to and talking back and forth with her on this new account. Eventually she gives me the story about how she was in an abusive family and how her father would beat her and the sob stories of all of this. And, and I kind of thought, okay, maybe she's going to try to ask me for money or something, but surprisingly she did not. And then she shifted on to how she hates her father and how after she graduated, she became rich and moved away and never seen him again. And once in a while, she sees her mother. And so I'm thinking, okay, maybe here again. Maybe this is the scam. She needs money to go see her mother because something comes up. 
So I keep that back in my mind. And then another day goes by, and then she starts talking about how she invested some money, and she asked me, can, she, can I verify something for her? So she sends me a link to this cryptocurrency kind of website. And the cryptocurrency was based on Ethereum. And in the website, it had Ethereum, except they didn't spell Ethereum correctly. They missed out one E. And so I knew right there, okay, here's the scam right here. She's going to try to get me to invest in this cryptocurrency scheme that she has going on. So I looked at the website that she had given me, and I noticed a lot of the graphics were stolen from the exact real Ethereum website. And so I told her, hey, I think this is a scam. Don't buy into it, and I'm not going to invest in this. And then immediately she, she goes in and says, oh, no, I don't think it's a scam. I think you're wrong because I just made you know, $80,000 off this and took it out and I'm using it right now. And I think you should invest too. I'm like, no, I'm not going to invest. So we're going back and forth. And she, she was saying how wrong I was and how, and then showed me a balance that she had, like, see, I made all this money. You could too. And then all you have to do is have an open mind and let me teach you how to do this. And I'm thinking, no, you're not going to teach me. You're going to try to scam me. So then after that happens, I just immediately end the conversation, blocked her, and then reported her on the dating app. And so the next thought I had was, okay, if she's on this dating app, is she on other dating apps also? So on the first dating app that she had, she was... In, she was 35 in my location in Kentucky. Okay, and Then I signed up for a second dating app. And lo and behold, I find the same person, but with a different name and a different age. She's Instead of 35, she's now 40. And instead of in Kentucky, she's now in California. So it's like, this is very interesting. So then I try talking to her. And to my surprise, she responds to me as if she has no idea who I am. I know exactly who she is. And then once she asks me what my intentions are, I give her a different answer for this account versus the other account. And she probably figured out, okay, who I was. So then she just stopped talking to me. And then on the third dating app that I found, she was the same person but had another different name, and this time she was 40 and living in Florida. So she had three different locations that she was in with three different names and three different ages. So it seems like she was trying to search for people in these major areas between the ages of 25 and 45 to see who she can get. And hopefully she was not very successful and I did report her on all of those different apps. So basically, now it comes down to what are the warning signs that I saw. The first one was the immediate messaging that I got. So before I had a chance to, to, uh, like or whatever it is on this particular dating app she immediately messages me and starts talking to me so I was like weird how this profile who has barely any information on all of a sudden has this interest in me but yet I can't really have much information on her and the second big major red flag was she's trying to immediately shift me off of the dating app messaging controls and take me to telegram and then once on telegram she shifts me from one telegram account to another telegram account so either there are multiple different people you know using this profile to try to get people or this one person is just shifting around these accounts to try to avoid being banned so to speak so that's the second account. 
second red flag is immediately just shifting from one account to another account to another account. Because if this was a real connection, then she would have no problem staying in the dating app, talking a little bit, possibly meeting before shifting outside of the dating app. But since she was so eager within 10 minutes to move me from the dating app into the telegram was very suspicious to me. And the last red flag before the scam really hit was all of the questions were geared towards trying to figure out how much money I made. And every time I try asking her something personal, she would deflect the conversation to something else to try to get me back into her her script, so to speak, to try to figure out, okay, is this someone that I can manipulate to get a scam out of? And then once the, the uh, scam hit, it was very easy to spot for me of course, because no one really would share cryptocurrency tips. Once the scam hit, it was easy for me to discover because just looking at the few things and going really slow, I noticed the different discrepancies in each of the steps. The first one being the incorrect spelling of Ethereum in the URL. That's a common tactic used by scammers to avoid the actual legitimate owner of the of whatever they're trying to impersonate to avoid them taking it down. Because one can argue, well, they're not really using their brand. They're just using it kind of sort of close to it, but not quite there. But it's a way to try to avoid just being taken down. Um, and then when you get to the website and compare it to the legitimate Ethereum website, you notice that a lot of the graphics are stolen. And, and they use that tactics to try to say, to try to make it seem that, hey, even though this website has the same graphics, you can trust us because the same person made it because that's why they have the same graphics, but that's not the case. They're just using the, imperson in the impersonation of the website to try to gain the trust so that you can feel comfortable saying, okay, this is really from the legitimate website, even though it's not. And then, when you really look down into the nitty gritties, like the about me page and all that, they're all pointed to the legitimate website with a different URL. So that way, you can say, oh, I am really who I say I am. So you just click the about me and you go into them and, and it kind of helps you trust them more because A, why would they say this, that have a false website but point it to the real legitimate website? It just doesn't make sense. Again, it's just a way to trick you into trusting the website. So the things, so those are the things to look out for. So how do you protect yourself in these situations? In the situation, as it comes to these dating apps, the first rule of thumb, I would say, is be very careful of how much information that you give to these people. I know you're trying to create a connection and possibly date these people, but don't give out too much information too soon. Um, the next thing is do not get out of the dating app and into either text messaging or WhatsApp or Telegram or Signal or whatnot until you have meet face to face. Because a lot of these scammers really do not want to expose themselves like that. If, if 
they are really using their pictures, which most likely they are using stolen pictures from other people. And so getting them to agree to meet face to face kind of reduces the chance of them being the scammer because they don't want to have that exposure because a most likely they aren't who they are and as soon as you meet, meet them face to face you'll know oh you're not who you say in the picture well what's up with those so that's second way to kind of protect yourself third way is no matter how much you know the person do not send them large amounts of money or even I'd say anything more than $20 really because that's how they get you they start talking to you make you feel like you have the connection oh you're so much in love oh but I just need a thousand dollars to get a plane ticket to come meet you and then once you give them the money you'll never hear from them again it's kind of a sad story and I know it's kind of hard for some people to kind of shoot down this and kind of say no because well what if this is the one person I'm supposed to be with and I know it's kind of difficult but to protect yourself the best thing to do is just not to agree to send out money to people and the third thing I would say is get either a friend or a close family member that no matter what you will agree you'll set up a system where you will share this information with them and say okay I met this person here this is what they've told me this is the pictures and so on and so forth do you think that this is a scam do you think I should pursue this further or not and no matter what they say you will follow their guidance because they are outside of the situation so their thinking is a lot different than what you're thinking is during the situation because once you're in the the conversations your emotions kind of do cloud your judgment sometimes and you'll need a third party person who's outside all of this situation who can objectively look at it and say okay I see this information and I either see something wrong with it or I don't see anything wrong with it and if they tell you yes this is a scam do not get mad at them just walk away from that person it may be the hardest thing you can do but that's what you'll have to do but if they say yeah it's fine go with it but this has to be someone who you can really trust who will not sugarcoat things who will just say okay yes no boom be clear cut and not afraid to tell you the truth and again no matter what they say you have to follow what they say if you follow these things, you can easily avoid these traps that they can set up. And another good idea is, like I was saying before, set up a Google Voice account so that if you do decide to text people, use your Google Voice to at first to make sure that this person really isn't scamming you and then once you actually do start to get a little bit more seriously you met them face to face and you start hanging out and this is the real thing then you can give them your real number and and life is good but if they ended up being a scammer nothing's lost because they don't have your real information then you just block them and move on so with these said this is my personal this is my personal experience that someone tried to scam me and I found them out and I stopped them right away and hopefully this will allow you to learn from the experiences so that you don't get tried to get sucked in the same way 
And if you do have friends or family who are in that situation, try to guide them out of it and try to get them to be convinced that this really is a scam. The best thing to do is don't start blaming them or start getting really hostile with them. You'll just have to try to lovingly convince them to walk away from the situation because it, it will be very difficult because these scammers are very convincing and they do make a they do pull on your emotions so much that you do feel like they're genuine and they really love you and that they'll never harm you or anything like that but the best thing to do is to walk away from those situations and if you find other family members and you see that they are getting scammed it, the best thing to do is try to get them to walk away. And it's going to be very difficult and you have to be very convincing and just try to help them step through it step by step because the attackers are playing the long game with this romance scam. They're not going to be trying to get the money right away luckily i was in a situation where they probably went way too fast and weren't very successful but some of the other good ones the ones that are very good at what they do they take months or even years before they start scamming for the money and once you're in that situation it's very hard to just think logically so you you're trapped in a situation where you think that you met your one and only and they're going to pull on the heartstrings and they're going to make sure that you do what they want you to do so just the best thing to do is think before you act and take time in between the messages so that you can really think about okay why is they re why are they really asking me for this money do i really should i really give this to them are they really a scammer why are they even interested in me in the first place i know it's kind of a weird question to ask but sometimes if it's too good to be true it's too good to be true cuz it's a scam and with that said, this will put an end to this episode, and hopefully you can, you've can you learned something or that you have... So this put... So that puts the end of this episode, and hopefully you've learned something, and hopefully if you do find someone in your family or friends who are put in this situation, you will know exactly what to look out for so that you can help them out. And with that said, we'll see you in the next episode and hopefully you'll stay safe out there. Right. Thanks for listening to the Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates. Join us next time when we dive into more security issues and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast, stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com.